I was extremely sick. I was born extremely sick. I had been told that I may not be able to survive. And then when I was uh, three years old that I remember, I started to paint because I needed to express how I felt. I needed to dream about a day when I will feel better, when I will escape from pain. I needed to, to believe in something, in a better day, you know. I remember the color pencil that I was using the first time and the, how much passion I put into it, how much, how relieved I was after I did paint. And I did paint every day because it was a way of expressing my deepest feelings and emotions. And I wanted to forget about the pain and I wanted to forget about the sadness that I was experiencing. And I just wanted to feel hope in my heart and to feel happy. My mother and my grandfather, they were very um, enthusiastic and uh, very in love with my paintings. And they, they did absolutely everything to put me in a school, to make it passable, to, to make my dreams come true. And um, I loved each day going to that school because it was my dream that became true. In 1994, I married my uh, beloved husband and uh, we came together in the United States. I felt very grateful and very blessed that I made. I uh, married my soulmate. I had been living in the United States for about 10 years at the time and she um, she was living in Romania with her mother. She just graduated from, from college several months before we, uh, we um, uh, had known of each other. And then we started to talk on the phone. And at one point in time, I decided it did cost me too much on phone bills, so I decided to take a trip there. And we uh, met in person. Uh, I remember that was on a Monday. Uh, we met at the airport, she waited for me, it was really nice. And by Saturday we got married. He encouraged me to model. And uh, we decided to apply to different agencies. And I got accepted. We applied to 12, I remember. And I got accepted by 11 of them. And uh, immediately I got a few jobs. And I was, we were very excited about that. And I, um, I really loved the confidence that uh, my husband had in uh, what I was doing. And uh, very proud, he was very proud. And unfortunately, after a few jobs, I got sick. The pain started, it was excruciating. I've been diagnosed with trigeminal, atypical trigeminal neuralgia. And uh, the pain was so excruciating that uh, a toothache and facial pain. It was so excruciating that at one point I felt like my heart is gonna stop. I did take lots of painkillers, cortisone shots. I remember I took 12 cortisone shots in six months in uh, my face by DMJ. It was terrible because I gained I remember 55 pounds in a very short period of time, and I couldn't model anymore. So one of the dreams that I had died. At the height of her illness, of her condition, I do remember on several occasions, we visited some doctors that obviously must have thought of a great deal of themselves and were extremely frustrated by the fact that they were not able to find a not only a cure for her condition, but even a reason for her condition. I was put on several painkillers, and they did ease the pain a little bit, but they did not ever took it away. The pain was still there. And of course, I, I had the, the pain all over my body that was moving, uh, the muscle pain and joint pain that were hurting all the time. I personally did not think we will ever um, overcome this. I didn't know how. Um, I lost uh, faith in uh, conventional medicine. 
We've seen, we must have seen over 50 doctors of all um, 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 sorts and styles and um, basically um, um, the proposed solutions that they offered us did not um, did not suit us. Um, they were talking about surgery on her face and which would have resulted in her drooling uncontrollably. Um, things of that nature that you don't do when, um, when somebody's 26 year, uh, years old. And uh, some doctors that we've uh, visited did not, would not even acknowledge this, these, any of these conditions as real medical conditions. Uh, she was told repeatedly by uh, several doctors that it's probably in her mind. It's probably because she's um, craving attention. Really, really upsetting things for a, a person who was in, in deeply in pain. I remember I was put in 1995 on Tegretol, which is a very, very strong painkiller. And um, I remember the desperation and sadness that we had all the time. And um, in, uh, I believe in 1997, I was put on several antibiotics, but I remember this precise one that I was supposed to take and then every two or three weeks to have my blood test for the um, enzymes level in my liver. It was that I had that uh, level of poisoning my body and I just remember that I told my husband I cannot take it anymore. I don't want to take any medication anymore because I did gain 55 pounds, the pain is still there. And in 1997, I started to experience um, difficulties to walk. I couldn't walk anymore. I had the fatigue, the weakness. I couldn't stand up. I had to be bedridden for several months. I could not function at all. Her illness mostly consisted of pain attacks, really deep, um, um, terrifying, um, torturing pain attacks, which at the peak of her illness would occur every two, three hours. And they would last any time from half an hour to an hour or two hours sometimes. Um, time of the day, obviously would make no difference. She would have them in the morning, she would have them in the afternoon, she would have them at two o'clock in the morning. It would not make a difference. Then I decided to stop all the medication. I did not want to take any more of... Um, I stopped altogether and I said, if I, if I don't believe that I'm gonna get healed, if I don't do the research on my own, if I don't believe in impossible of... Um, I became restless. I needed an answer. She um, surfed the internet uh, day and night looking for um, potential cures. Do the research, learn everything that I could possibly learn. Buy all the books in the world. Find all the products, the alternative medicine, the natural products that I started to believe in. And uh, I remember one day I told Lee, uh, my husband, I was excited and I said, I found 10 products at the time and they were promising. And I said, which one should I get? And he said, you get them all. And I said, then we don't know which one works. And then his answer, his answer was, you get them all, you try them all. And I, I have the, the feeling that you will find out, trust your instincts, honey. You will find out which one will work for you. So finally, uh, uh, we stumble into uh, a line of products made by uh, Manatech, uh, alternative products made, made by Manatech, which is a company out of Texas. And some of the products seem to be working really, uh, really uh, miracles on her. Um, again, it took a long time. Her pain attacks were starting to be less uh, often uh, and less powerful than they used to be. Um, they started to be spaced more and more apart. Um, the intensity would uh, not be as, as, as high as it used to be. Um, she started to lose a couple of pounds. She started to, to be able to work out. Um, 
I think in the beginning five minutes a day and um, it was very very difficult for her to do it. We had a hard time decided to purchase a house. Um, she got bedridden for months. She just started to get out of bed and um, she had good, better days and not so good days at all. Originally, I would just, over my lunch hour, go home. Since I was like a mile and a half away from home, I was working really, uh, really close. Uh, and I knew once we are gonna be building the house and moving into a new house in another uh, 60 miles, that would not be feasible for me to, to do uh, during my lunch hour. And uh, she'd be on her own um, the whole day. That was a real concern to me. But finally, we took a gamble and we said, um, we're gonna go ahead for, uh, for building the house. We had a house built in 1999. Um, back then, I remember she was still um, heavily, heavily overweight because of all the um, 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 painkillers she had taken. Um, she had lots of toxins in her uh, system. I remember her walking through the house and I was walking through the house and uh, having big plans and dreams and uh, uh, along with the house and along with the new neighborhood and along with the, uh, 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 this change in our life, I was, uh, we were both hoping for a change in her health and uh, in her condition, in her um, weight and overall um, uh, condition and um, thank God it did happen. My... Uite cât te mandă Lina. We've gotten so accustomed to these pain attacks that even after she started to feel better, we had really tangible signs that she was doing better. Um, again, pain attacks were really farther apart and not as powerful. Um, we would still be um, 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 jumping at the first sight and I would we would both continue to be uh, like this for a long time. We've been really traumatized by this uh, whole process. We were afraid to go on vacation. We were afraid to have a commitment because always I was in pain. I was always in excruciating pain. And um, it was very hard to go anywhere because if we were to go to a restaurant, I started to have the um, atypical trigeminal neuralgia gives you a very spontaneous pain a very, very intense pain. And I remember that we wanted so much to go on vacation, like a getaway, like to, to forget everything. The pain, of course, followed us. And uh, we finally made it possible. We went to Cancun at a beautiful resort with everything just very nice to make you feel happy. And the pain started so bad that particular night so excruciating and my half of my face started to be extremely swollen. This pain was different. This pain would not be an attack in the sense that it would not subside at all. It would be continuous. So as a first attempt we called the um, local uh, um, hotel doctor. He came over, he was not obviously able to do much and then to give her a shot. Later we found out there was morphine. So, uh, and all, he also suggested that we uh, take the first flight available home, which we did. So by the time we landed, she was in absolutely atro atrocious pain. Um, we had to go straight to the hospital, to the emergency room. I mean, her face, her left side of her face was so swollen, she was not recognizable. You could see her face was, was not symmetrical anymore. She was grossly, grossly swollen on, on, on the left side. And yet one of the doctors that took a look at her uh, could not see much of a difference. He told us that, well, I don't know how she normally looks like. Well, the doctor said if we would have waited another day, I could have died. And um, it was a terrible moment because a terrible infection that it was there, but it, uh, it, uh, it um, got um, uh, worse because of the flight, because of the plane. It busted somehow. And uh, it was uh, making its way into the brain. 
And if you would have gotten there, then I don't know what, if we could have done anything. I have a strong belief in miracles. I prayed a lot to find a way to get cured. I just needed the harmony between my mind, my body and soul. I needed to be in complete harmony to fulfill my dreams. It was the biggest battle of my life. I never lost hope in fighting uh, for my dreams. I decided to do whatever it took to change everything and I wasn't able even to walk. I remember one day I told Lee I'm gonna purchase um, cardio tape. I bought Tybo and I started to work out. I needed to lose 55 pounds. When I went to doctors, they told me there is no cure. You have fibromyalgia, I went to Mayo Clinic. I've been told I have, besides a typical um, trigeminal neuralgia, I've been told on top of this I had um, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, which there is no cure. I've been to doctors, several, many doctors I've been through, and they told me there is no cure for what you have. You have to, um, to start to understand that, to accept that, to um, be happy that you don't um, die from it or uh, you don't have, um, experience any uh, physical changes. And uh, 55 pounds is just part of uh, um, your uh, uh, muscle condition and there is no way you can change that. And I said, I can't accept it. I have to believe in something. I have to believe in a miracle that's gonna happen to me and I have to fight for it. And I knew I am on my own. So in 2000, not being able to, to walk, being bedridden, I started to have this visualization of me being healthy, being able to work out. I, um, and of course, most of all, being able to, to paint, to paint on large paintings. That was my dream. So in 2000, I decided to buy a tape, and it was the hardest moment to see the fact that the only thing that I could have done in one day was to work out for five minutes in the morning, and then I started to cry and pray to be able to work out another five minutes in the afternoon. That was every day. Five minutes in the morning, five in the afternoon for several weeks and then I was happy to see that I'm getting better. And I was happy to see that when I went in my studio, I did not need a chair. I was able to, to paint around the painting without sitting. So after I lost the 30 pounds, doing this by myself in my house, I was finally ready to go outside and to work out. And I found a great personal trainer. When we first met, I had some reservations about working out with Madalena because um, she came to me and she actually had a list of a couple sheets of paper that talked about all the medical issues that we had. We had the weight gain, we had the acne, the IBS. I mean, just lots of different things that I was concerned with working out with her. I felt like there was really limited things I could do. But after listening to her and telling her that she exhausted all options of what she wanted to do to help herself, I found that uh, seeing her motivation that I would really be able to help her out because she really seemed determined and motivated to get some results. It seemed that all the doctors and physicians that she had met with it pretty much ruled it out and said you just have to deal with it. So this was kind of the last straw and so we just kind of developed a program around what she could and couldn't do and she just excelled with it. So That I started with and I remember that I was, um, now that I do the interval program which is a very very challenging, very hard program to do, 
But back then, I remember um, he explained to me all the things that he wanted me to do, and I, I realized how hard that will be, but I have, I had the determination. She wasn't overweight. She told me when we first met that she was 55 pounds heavier, and that she had lost 30 pounds, and that we had another 20, 25 pounds to lose. And so I told her that, well, those are probably the hardest ones to lose. However, if you stick with the program and find balance with your program, everything would be fine. So, and that's what she did. She promised me that she would do exactly as I asked, nutrition-wise, resistance training, cardiovascular, stretching the whole nine yards, and she did it all just as I asked. So it was great. I mean, she's got the numbers that you would see in like a 22-year-old female. One of the things I've noticed about Madalena since we've been working out is her self-esteem, self-worth, everything has just gone through the roof. She was somebody who didn't really say anything to anybody when she came in, and now when she comes in, it's like, you know, a celebration when she comes in because she just wants to show off what she's been able to do. She could be the role model for a lot of my clients. I mean, people just see her and just ask, what is Madalena doing? I just want to know her program. She started to paint when her pain started to subside a little and she confessed to me that she pushed herself she wanted to do it for me she knew how much I loved her painting she knew how much um, I, I loved seeing her having a purpose in life uh, that to me was maybe in the back of my mind like a sign that she's getting better I always knew she was extremely gifted I always knew she was extremely, extremely talented. I always knew she, uh, she's not going to um, be content to do it just for us. She had so much talent and so much to, to show and, and to give that she had to get out, to, to open up, to, to let the people see her art. Knowing Madalena, who is such a calm person, she's a very peaceful person. She always makes me feel more centered when I talk to her. She helps me eliminate the chaos that we live in because she is such a centered person. She's very focused and she's very calm. A piece like this though, when you first look at it, seems to be contrary to her personality. It's an explosion of color. It's absolutely the gradation of autumnal tones of oranges and bronzes and blacks and right down into the greens and the moss colors. You know, it's just a, there's something, it's passionate um, and it's, it's just a, a force of emotion. She's a natural and she's doing it so well and so profoundly she uh, emerging, uh, she's emerging herself into, into her wor uh, work and um, you can't just drag her out of it. Mean, she has to get out of it herself. Um, she paints hours at a time and um, by the time she's done she's simply exhausted. Uh, not just uh, physically for all, uh, all the effort but mentally as well. I'm very grateful and very blessed that I had my husband who helped me tremendously to go through everything and to just be with me day and night and caring so much and being such a generous soul and um, just amazing. I, I was exposed uh, during my seven years with the Detroit Institute of Arts to an encyclopedic museum of, of every of the best artists that exist in the world. And you learn uh, throughout that experience to see different qualities, especially in the modern art of the contemporary period that we're dealing with these days. Uh, I find some of the things that I enjoy about her artwork is the, is the depth of the colors. Uh, I'm very passionate with the heavy, bright, and the, the, the very solid reds, the very solid blues, and how you know, each variation of the color comes through and, and really pops the painting so that it comes quite alive. I find in the gold paintings, uh, the more abstract ones, that uh, it's just sort of alive. The painting is alive, and, and, the, and the use of the of the real, I think it's 24 karat gold or, or whatever the the final touches that goes on top just pops it. So especially when it's in a, in a room with that's lit, it just it catches your eye immediately. Your eye is totally drawn to the painting because of the brilliance of the color, but also the techniques that's used. I think Madalena has such strong memories of her home country, of her childhood, which is very different. It's a place, it, Romania looks very different than the United States. 
And so she's recovering aspects of her own different past through the act of painting. But more important, and this is why with Madalena and Nicola's work, it's important to know the, the element of sickness and suffering and pain that she went through because it was by recovering past sensations and, and memories of health and of happiness, and she recovered those feelings through the painting act, that she came through to health. I think Madalena's paintings are absolutely beautiful. Uh, truly a reflection of a beautiful person as well as beautiful paintings. Uh, go hand in hand, especially when you're looking at the painting, you see beautiful paintings, but not only the struggles and the things that she's had to go through in her life um, por are portrayed on the canvas. Um, the different scenes, the different paints, the different way that you look at the pictures are a reflection of her, the way that her life has been difficult, happy, um, different emotions displayed on the canvas and are truly a reflection of her and uh, her struggles that she's gone through. One night I remember I, um, we came back, uh, myself and my husband, from a doctor appointment with no hope. They just uh, confirm again that there is no cure, there is no hope and I was very, very sad and um, I saw a branch uh, that uh, broke from the tree. It was a beautiful branch and I thought myself, is it gonna die? No, it's not gonna die. It probably be, will go to a superior step of its existence. And then I got inspired by that. It was a fantastic phenomenon for me. And I just felt like that branch. I felt when I will get healthy, that I will have the complete freedom and that I will go to a superior level of my existence. It took several years, several years of work, um, until she improved as, as, as an artist. Uh, she started painting larger and larger canvases. Her subject uh, diversified. Her uh, um, color palette diversified, fantastic, uh, substantially. She's, um, uh, she's using basically all the colors the, in the alphabet. Something that I've seen grow uh, from, from the semi-reclusive person who would paint in her mm -hmm. studio and would barely have the courage to show me the painting uh, to the adult mature painter that she is today. I get inspired from uh, um, my uh, powerful emotions, which I see as uh, uh, visual images. Actually, they are like um, uh, virtual paintings that I see in my mind. Paintings that I saw before, paintings that I could return all the time in my mind when I need to. And uh, uh, they are these paintings that even that I did not paint yet, I feel like they were sent to me. And I know the name already before I uh, paint them. And then I just become restless because I feel so compelled to put them on canvases. And I just, I find myself at 3 a.m. in the morning just thinking of ways to, to make that painting that I see in my mind. Uh, in the last uh, years, I am um, very happy to say that I had uh, exhibits nationwide, which I am uh, uh, very grateful and I was very, very happy uh, to have and to see that people were in love with the paintings and they identified the same emotions that I, I've been through they found the same ocean through my paintings. And that I really loved the most. I'm happy to see a work like this where she is able to, to be so strong, uh, especially having experienced those moments of complete incapacity. This is a triumphal piece uh, that captures 
her triumph, her personal triumph, and an artistic triumph to be able to command all of these colors and create a whole. I would absolutely qualify her as an accomplished artist. It's, it's interesting having known her for the past couple of years, the ability to see the interest by different gallery owners and, and others throughout the United States certainly attests to the, to the quality of the artistic uh, presentation and attests to the uh, timeliness of the type of work that she does that appeals to people uh, throughout, the, throughout the nation. That's why the shows that she's had in Chicago, New York, uh, Washington, D.C., and, and, and Florida, which is up, up and coming, will certainly maintain her on the forefront of uh, the current artists of today. I am in love with each painting I've done so far. I love them, they are my babies, and um, celebration is, um, this is the center part of the largest painting I ever made called Celebration. Celebration, it was dedicated to, it, to me uh, getting better, to my health, now that I have it back. And it's a celebration and, uh, of life, of love and passion. And um, it is dedicated to the people that were with me all the way, that helped me tremendously to go through my illness. I remember some of the uh, uh, opening nights. People would absolutely uh, be impressed. They would not even know that she is there or who she was. She would, she would not be wearing a badge or anything. So people would not know that those paintings were her work. Paintings to me is, now I am, I feel so blessed being healthy. And it's a victory in itself. It was the biggest battle of my life and I won. Um, she was called um, anything from um, uh, an avant-garde type of a painter, which is a trendsetter, um, which is great, which is absolutely great. Um, her paintings were called to have a Turneresque uh, radiance, which is again great. I just read that there are millions of people who suffer from fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and trigeminal neuralgia, and they know there is no cure for what they have. I am very grateful for everything, and I, I just want them to be better and to, to really believe that there is cure and they can make it, and they just have to have faith and to pray and to never lose hope for what they are doing, to fulfill their, you know, their dreams, to be healthy, and to, to really, really believe that one day they will be better.